Hey, today I wanted to go over some ways that you can improve your embroidery and some product recommendations. So tip number one would be choice of embroidery fabric. So when I first started embroidering, I just kind of thought that I could use whatever I wanted basically. And things like t-shirt material that are kind of stretchy aren't the greatest um, because your fabric can pucker when you're stitching on it and it's just not a very easy fabric to work with. So when you're first learning, I would suggest not using t-shirt fabric. Some of the most popular fabrics you can find that I would definitely recommend and that I use still is something like Kona Cotton, which I actually just recently started using. Um, I really like Kona Cotton a lot um, because it is very sturdy and it comes in a bunch of different colors and it has holes that are small enough to where um, you can really work in a lot of detail into it but it's not going to be hard to pull your needle through the fabric because of like the fabric being too tightly woven the next kind of fabric i really like to use is linen um, this is a linen blend so it's a little bit softer than linen like 100% linen. 100% linen is good to work with too, but it's kind of stiff. This is a little bit more supple. I'm honestly not sure what it's mixed with, but it doesn't have elastic in it. It's very sturdy. Um, that is one other thing that you do want to be aware of when you are working with any sort of uh, fabric to embroider on it, because the more elasticity it has, it's harder to work with and if you end up putting it in an embroidery hoop, it could relax and like stretch out and look kind of saggy after a while. So you definitely wanna make sure that the fabric you're working with is kind of a medium weight and it's not, it's not elastic. And then the next embroidery fabric that I like to work with is this even weave fabric. This comes in a bunch of different um, thread counts. So the higher the count, the smaller the holes. Um, this is just like a white even weave and you can get this at a lot of like needlepoint and craft stores. This is really good to learn on too just because um, the weave is very even. Um, that is another thing that I wanted to go over. You can stitch on fabric that has an uneven weave and when I say that the grid that you see that forms in the fabric, this one's pretty obvious. You can see how even um, the, the weaving of the fabric is. If you start stitching on something that has an uneven weave, depending on your project, it can be kind of frustrating because your stitches can turn out to look uneven or jagged. Um, so while you can use that kind of fabric, I don't like to use that very often. I like to stick to fabrics that are even weaves. And all of the ones that I have mentioned are even weaves. Um, like linen is normally pretty even weave. Sometimes you can find stuff that's a little uneven and this Kona cotton is very hard to see because the, the, it's, it's a pretty tight weave, but um, this is all even weaving as well. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is embroidery thread. I think that embroidery thread, whatever brand you want to go with, is pretty much fine when you're first learning. I use DMC for pretty much everything, but I wanted to go over the difference between these two, which I have done before, but I did want to go over kind of the benefits of using one over the other. So this first um, thread is six stranded thread. This is actually a piece that I've divided out, but this has six strands to it. And this is DMC six strand cotton floss. This is what I normally use and it is my preferred embroidery thread, but if you're trying to learn certain stitches, I would suggest starting out with the pearl cotton. This is actually braided and you cannot take apart these strands. And the reason that I recommend doing this is because when you're learning things like a French knot or a stem stitch, your needle can get caught in between the strands of these embroidery threads and end up pulling them unevenly and it's just kind of like a hassle. But with this, you only have one strand of thread to worry about. And I think it definitely helps you when you're trying to like nail down the basics of stitches. So I would recommend getting like maybe a few colors of the pearl cotton floss 
and you can get that at any craft store that you can also get the DMC six strand and then work your way to using the six strand. I think that'll help uh, massively. If there was one thing that I could tell you to spend a little bit more money on, I would say embroidery hoops. So sometimes when you buy an embroidery hoop, this is not a super like uneven one, but as you can see, the inner and the outer hoop are slightly different shapes. This doesn't completely sit flush in all areas, like right here. And what happens is you put the fabric in the hoop and it doesn't grip it evenly. So then your fabric ends up slipping. So the biggest thing you wanna pay attention to when you're at the craft store is getting hoops that sit flush, the inner and the outer ring sit flush together. This is a perfect example of a hoop that is really nice quality. I also like to use these hoops. They're um, from Stay Home Stitches and they're really nice because they're finished but also because the screw is really nice. It's really nice hardware. This is not going to bend when you tighten it like sometimes with cheaper ones they do. And as you can see, the rings are entirely flush with one another. So there is no slippage in the fabric when you use one of these hoops. So I would say definitely spend a couple more dollars on a hoop um, online. If you don't want to get like a super premium quality one, the other brand that I think is really affordable that I have the best luck with is like the Daris brand embroidery hoops. Um, as you can see, they sit pretty flush. Honestly, I think this one might be a Daris hoop, but this is kind of a dud. All the other ones that I've gotten for the most part are thicker wood, they're not some of the ones you can get at like Michael's and all of those places. The wood tends to be like it splinters easily and it doesn't look like it's as thick as the rings of these ones. So I'll link both of these um, these two hoops below so you can take a look at those. The next um, tip that I wanted to go over is having a good stencil or pattern to go off of. This is major because I feel like Unless you're just practicing stitches and you like are trying to actually embroider something, having a good plan, like anything really, is just ideal and you'll get a lot further and be happier with the result. So I suggest having something that's nice to transfer your patterns over with, like a water soluble marker, which I feel like I mentioned a ton of times in my videos. But I recommend this brand the most because they last the longest they wash off easy, but also the lines that you can draw on the fabric with these are definitive. Like they're not faint. I'll, I can show you really quick. So as you can see, that is a nice solid line. It's not gonna be hard to see or go off of, and it doesn't come off when you touch it either. I have noticed that there are some water soluble markers out there that aren't very good and they also run out really quickly um, and they also fade really quickly. These ones do not fade, but they also wash out easily. The other thing that I think is major too is that if you have an image you want to embroider, sometimes there are just certain images that you will draw that just don't transfer well as an embroidery. So I think it's really imperative that you Keep it pretty basic when you're first starting out on as to like what kind of patterns you do or what kind of images you stitch. And I would highly recommend some kind of beginner kit to get started. I think this is like really good because it shows you some basic, basic stitches and it also will keep you like motivated because it's like a project to work through. So I just shameless plug here, <laughs> but uh, I do sell kits and I just wanted to show you all of my kits come with fabric that has the pattern printed on it. This is a very beginner friendly pattern. It uses one, two, three, I think like three or four different basic stitches that I think every beginner should learn. And also if you end up buying a kit, it doesn't have to be mine, but a lot of people that sell kits, it'll come with like full things of embroidery floss or at least enough for you to stitch the project. And it'll also come with um, a needle and also it'll come with some kind of instructions. Normally if they're beginner friendly, it will, it will come with some kind of um, guide 
for all the stitches. So for mine, I have like a little get started page and then it goes over how to stitch each part. And then at the very end, I have diagrams with instructions on each of the stitches. And I think stuff like this is really helpful because like I said, it gives you a project to work towards and um, it's an image that is suitable for an embroidery. Cause sometimes when I was first starting out, I would try to draw something thinking like, oh, this is gonna be the perfect drawing for an embroidery. And it just like would not end up looking right or it was too detailed and it was hard to stitch. So I would highly recommend just like giving like one of like a beginner kit a try. You can find a ton of these on Etsy and I'll also link mine that I saw on my website as well. The next thing that I see people doing a lot is not pulling their fabric super tight and also pulling their stitches way too tight. So sometimes when you're embroidering and you're first getting started, it's hard to figure out like how tight you should have things. So it's gonna either be like too loose or too tight. And when you end up stitching really, really tight, you end up warping the fabric and then your stitches look all weird and uneven. So when you're stitching, I highly suggest before you start making sure that your fabric is very secure in the hoop. So you want to pull it completely tight. You don't want your fabric to be warping at all. Like if it, if you pull it too tight and you see that the grain starts to look kind of like uneven and slanted in the hoop. Um, so that's the first thing you want to do is just making sure that your fabric is nice and tight. And I'm gonna loosen up these stitches. And I'm also going to make sure that the screw at the top is a, as tight as I can get it. That way I know that my fabric is not gonna slip. So between selecting the right hoop that's gonna seat well and have no like seams in the inner, between the inner and outer ring, making sure your fabric is evenly placed and also securing it, you're gonna have like kind of like a drum tight um, surface to work on and that will definitely help. And then when you're embroidering now, it's gonna be harder for you to embroider anything too, too tight. So if I start now, you want your stitches to be secure but you shouldn't have to like pull them so tight that they're like warping the fabric but you also don't want to leave them loose either. You want them to like sit flush on the fabric and really just like slow down a little bit when you're first learning and just work on really paying attention to like how you're stitching. I think that was like one of the biggest things with me too is like rushing and that was ac that's actually my next point. If you start getting frustrated like any new skill it's going to be a little hard at first you're going to stumble. I still like try to master certain stitches and I just can't get them quite right. And sometimes just taking a break or trying a different stitch or doing a different project will help you majorly. Because a lot of the time, I know I'm stubborn. Um, <laughs> I tend to like try and push myself to the limit and I don't wanna stop because I'm like, well, this isn't going right. I'm just gonna keep going. But I really think taking your time, taking a break really will like work magic <laughs> when you're trying to learn new things. The next thing that I highly recommend, this is just a miscellaneous supply, but I always like to have a seam ripper on hand or embroidery scissors, but I prefer to take out stitches if you like ab absolutely have to with a seam ripper because you're not going to abs accidentally tear a hole in the fabric. I can't tell you how many times I have tried to take out stitches with scissors and ended up like kind of creating a tiny hole, which can turn into a big hole. <laughs> So having a seam ripper is imperative if you're trying to um, learn and you want to be able to like correct your mistakes. The next thing that I really suggest that you have, and this is how I mainly learned because I didn't really see like YouTube tutorials at the time, like YouTube and like Etsy kits and stuff weren't like a major thing. I have a lot of embroidery books that I found. And a lot of these books go into like highly detailed tutorials on how to um, stitch basic stitches. As you can see, like these are all just like photos of different 
kinds of loop stitches and then it'll tell you how to do them on the page that's there. This book is a DK stitch step by step and I got this at a thrift store. I find a lot of embroidery books at thrift stores. This one's cool too because it goes into like Bargello and Needlepoint and a bunch of different kinds of um, needlepoint or needlework and I think it's really helpful because it's very clear and step by step. I hope this helped you guys a little bit. Um, yeah, just some little things here and there that I've learned over the years of embroidering um, that have definitely helped and I still am always looking for new like shortcuts and like beneficial things to learn so leave your recommendations on some of your best embroidery tips down in the comments. Alright, thanks!